Okay, this is a cast of the Humboldt Point that I found back in the uh, 1980s in the Great Basin of Oregon. And we're going to go ahead and uh, try and make a replica of this. And we're going to finish it with these two pressure flakers right here. Now I showed this before, but I want to show it again because this is a, uh, an actual pressure flaker that was found in a cave. Now these flakers right here, they can be made from bone or antler. I've used antler in this case. The one in the, uh, that I just showed you, the artifact, was probably made from bone. I uh, switched over to antler because it's a little bit more durable, it's softer. The advantage of these type of flakers right here, as opposed to just an antler tine like this one right here, this is curved, it doesn't feel very good in the hand, it's kind of awkward to control. With this you get a really nice straight control, you can push directly and there's no twist in it. The other advantage is that uh, this will only last a certain period of time. Once it gets down to about here, the core of this is going to be real punky and, uh, and soft and kind of porous and, and it won't be durable enough to really get the job done. The beauty of this is this can be utilized all the way down. You just keep uh, unwrap it, remove it, file it down a little bit and you know you, you can wait until you get down about three or four inches and still utilize the, uh, the antler in it. Now I use this elk antler tine for the uh, pressure flakers that I just showed you and basically I just cut the end off here. It's a nice straight section around 10 inches long. I'll show that to you. So here's the section of antler that uh, these two were cut from. Basically I just cut it to length and then split it down the middle. Basically sawed it, not split it. And then uh, quartered it and then quartered it again until I got thin strips like this. Now, if you have a bandsaw, a bandsaw would probably be a lot better way to go. I don't have one, so I just used this uh, reciprocating saw with an extra long blade on it. Did the job, took maybe five minutes or so. The blade got a little hot a few times, so I had to stop and let it cool down, but it worked. And for removing this uh, porous inner layer that you see on here, and basically bringing it down to the hard outer layer, I just used the rasp here. And that was really fast, it only takes a few minutes to do that. I guess the most outstanding feature of this Humboldt Point is the nearly perfect parallel flaking that many of the flakes actually go edge to edge, clip off part of the opposite edge just a little bit. And uh, this is called parallel oblique because it's not straight in. This, or these Daltons over here, these are cast, they actually have uh, parallel flaking as well. They're not always oblique as in this case right here. This is a monster point right here. But uh, basically the same technique, real similar technique. Is, used to make the Humboldt as these. The difference is in the sequence of flaking and I'll go over that right now. So here's a little sketch of the uh, Humboldt point showing the uh, flaking sequence. Basically the left edge of one face was flaked first, then the point was flipped over, the left edge of the opposite face was flaked next, then the point was flipped over again and the right edge of the original face was flaked actually from tip to base is the opposite and then the final sequence is tip to base on the right edge of the opposite face. Interestingly, this Dalton and most of the others, they have a similar sequence, the only difference being that they started on the right edge of each face and then finished with the left edge. It doesn't really matter which way you go. So the result of all this is that the finished point has a cross section that looks like this. It's a little different from what uh, most modern nappers do. This edge right here, this is looking at the point down here, this edge was done last from tip to base and so there's a little bit of a concavity right along this right edge and this edge over here is convex as you can see in this drawing right here. If you flip the point over you see the same thing. Concavity over here on the right edge, convexity over here. That's because of the sequence of flaking. When the flakes were removed, the bulb actually leaves a little bit of a concavity here and then it kind of rolls over the edge. Now modern nappers Typically what they do is on this lower one down here, most of us, including myself, will just go ahead and finish one face completely. So we'll do the left and the right edge of one face, completely finish it up, flip the point over, and then remove a series of flakes from the right and then, or the right and then the left edge of the opposite face. The result is that you end up with a cross section that looks similar to this. It's a little bit exaggerated, but you get the idea. Now you could actually tell a modern made point from an aboriginal point to some extent by this characteristic. 
if you see a modern uh, or a, a point that's being passed off as as a uh, as an actual artifact, and you see this kind of uh, of a cross section on it, I'd be a real suspect at that point. You won't notice it necessarily on a lot of points because they've been retouched, but on Allen points, Dalton's, Humboldt's, this is what it should look like right here. Now the edges of this thing have not been retouched. They did their final pass on the right edge of both faces and they left it like that. They didn't bother to do any retouch which gives you this real scalloped edge but it's razor sharp. That's the beauty of it. They're not worried about uh, you know looks and symmetry. They're more concerned with having a razor sharp edge and that's what you get with that. The technique that I'm using, and I think they did as well, I'm not sure of it, but I use a reverse beveled platform as you see right here. Now this platform is angled in this direction right here. Most nappers with a platform like that would remove pressure flakes on this face. What I'm doing is removing pressure flakes on the opposite face. And what that does is it completely removes any traces of the platform. There are no remnants of the platform on this. They're completely uh, stripped away with that last set of flakes. We'll go over that when we actually do the replication. Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, the goal is going to be to initially make a preform, percussion preform, a lot like this, possibly a little bit wider. That's probably what this guy started off with, something like that. And this is a nice piece of uh, black butter right here. Should be about right. Got a little bulb over there to get rid of. The side's fairly flat. Just want to build some nice heavy platforms and go ahead and rapidly thin this thing. Because this piece is pretty small, most of what I'm doing here is just going to be freehand percussion. get a little better edge over here. Pretty nice stuff. Got a nice ridge over there. We could knock one off from this side here. Save a little save a little width over there. Need a fairly heavy stout platform to do that with. Grind it pretty well. Switch to a little heavier billet here. That's what I was after. <laughs> 